you're fine. Like this is this is great. Just go for it. You are fine indeed. Welcome back to the Wild Business Growth Podcast. This is your place to hear from a new entrepreneur every single Wednesday morning who's turning wild ideas into wild growth. I'm your host, Max Brandstetter, founder and podcast producer at Max Podcasting. And you can email me at max at maxpodcasting.com to save time with your high quality podcast. This is episode 2003, sorry, 203. And today's guest is Crystal Profit. That's Crystal with a K and Profit with two Fs and two Ts. So we, we, there's lots of letters involved here. Crystal is a super helpful content strategist, content creator, host, teacher, mentor, uh, basically comedian as well. And she hosts both the Profit Podcast as well as the Potty Report, both incredibly helpful podcasts for content creators. She also is the author of the best-selling book, Start a Bingeworthy Podcast, which is bingeworthy in itself. And in this episode, we're talking confident content creation on confident content creation on all sorts of continents. That means repurposing content, getting over your internal hurdles when it comes to content, and some tips for solo podcasting, which is very, very tough. And this thing starts off hot right out of the gates. So buckle up, fasten your seatbelts. I guess that means the same thing. Uh, just, just prepare yourself. It is the most profitable crystal. Enjoy the show. Alrighty, we are here with one of the fan favorite content creators and content creator coaches and just everything that starts with uh, C for alliteration <laughs> in the land, Crystal Prophet, real name, Crystal, uh, I've seen your name, partly because of the name Prophet, but mostly because of the awesome work you do all across social media and, and even some of my clients uh, t- have taken your courses and can't say enough great things about you. Thanks for so much for joining today. How you doing? Yeah, Max, thank you so much. So I have to like point out one clarification. Yes, Prophet is my last name because people always ask me that and I'm so shocked that you weren't like, come on, is is that really your last? I've heard it enough. It's like, I love telling the story. I met my husband at business school. He introduced himself and he said his last name is Prophet. And I'm like, there's no way this absolutely has to be a line. And so I whenever I explain to people that I'm in business and I, you know, teach content strategy and I talk about business and profit, they're like, come on, that's gotta be a stage name. No, it is absolutely my last name profit. And I'm so happy to be here with you today and nerd out about podcasting and marketing and content. Cause it's my favorite thing to talk about. Perfect. And my favorite thing to talk about is profit. So you're perfect for yes. this. So, <laughs> So uh, typically, uh, as you know, as a multi-time times uh, a bajillion podcast episode podcast host, uh, the research for guests is a is a pretty fun, but also could be time consuming process. Um, but it's really fun, almost like an investigative journalist of like diving into their background and finding, oh, where's a good place to start the interview, or like where's good areas to hit on. And I almost feel like I'm cheating because with you, you literally have a section on your website for fun facts. And one of them was about the name Profit, which uh, you just shared the story. So that's already taken care of. But I almost felt like it was cheating. It was too easy. But I think that's just because you're such a great podcast guest and prepared and know it. So I want to go through some of these fun facts real quick and get your uh, admission on what what, what the story behind it is. So (laughs) first of all, um, as anyone would guess, you have the nickname Moose. Where, where did, did, besides Alaska, where did that come from? Okay. So it has nothing to do with Alaska. It has everything to do with the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. So I have been the size that I am five foot seven, five foot eight, since I was 12 years old. 
And like, it's super crazy. Like I just, I shot up like a rocket at a very young age. And then my parents were like, dear God, please let her stop growing. Cause she has a humongous foot and she's going to be so tall that she's never going to find, <laughs> find anybody to date her because she's just, she's giant. She's a moose. And so, um, my dad was a big fan of Daryl Johnston from back in the 80s, 90s that, that played for the Dallas Cowboys and his nickname was Moose. And it, he just called it to me one day and it just stuck. And I actually went by that all through high school, all through college. Like I have so much memorabilia with the name Moose on it. So that's my backstory on Moose. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, I'm cracking up that uh, your parents called you out for having a big foot. I mean, we had a, a shack on the show previously and his were pretty big, but no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, my feet are not that big. Okay. To be clear. <laughs> yeah. But uh, with the Cowboys reference, so uh, my dad's a huge Cowboys fan, so he'll appreciate that. But my fiance, Dana, is a huge New York Giants fan. So we uh, people are either throwing their, their phone <laughs> across the wall or, uh, or building a statue of you and your feet. Yes. But anyway, so, that, so, so that's the moose story. So cheers to that, Rocky and Bullwinkle. And then uh, you, speaking of big things, you also have a as you say, I quote, a tattoo the size of Texas. <laughs> so what, what, what's the story behind this? And are you regretting putting this stuff on your website publicly? Uh, no, I'm not regretting. I'm regretting it, putting it on my body permanently is what I'm <laughs> regretting. So this was a terrible thing that happened whenever I was 18. So, okay, I'm just like, here's all the dirt, Max. Like this is probably the most personal I've ever gotten so quickly into a podcast, but we're here and it's happening. I, I tend to bring it out of people in, in mooses. Or moose. <laughs> yeah. So whenever I was in high school, because I've been working, so I was 14 years old, I had so many different jobs here and there. One of my jobs my senior year was working in a tanning salon. I know I've already confessed this to my dermatologist. It's terrible. I shouldn't have done it, but here we are. It's happened and I can't take it back. But if you remember back in the early 2000s, probably in the late 90s, like when girls would go to the tanning bed, they have those little stickers and they would put them on their body. And then they would say, you know, like this is like the bunny ears. They're so tacky. And so let's just, it's trashy. Let's just call it what it is. Okay. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. But there was one that was a Texas cutout. And I was like, oh, this is fun. Like I'm going to do this. And so I go to the tanning bed, the darker you get, the lighter, the Texas would stand out from the tan. Well, I'm going to Florida with two of my girlfriends, like a senior trip after we've graduated and we get to Florida again, this, this is just a bad, bad, this is a cautionary tale, ladies and gentlemen, don't do this, especially when you're 18. And we get to Florida and the girls are like, we should get tattoos. We're 18, we're grown people, we're out of the house, let's make it happen. They said, what do you wanna get? My other friends chose for something that was probably the size of a quarter, very small. Not me. I go big, I go home. There was a Texas <laughs> option. It, don't get a tattoo of another state in a different state. Again, cautionary tales all around. I literally have a huge, huge tattoo of Texas on my lower back and it's not coming off because I heard it's more painful to get it taken off than it is putting it on there. So that's my story. It is, it's literally Texas shaped tattoo and I have so many regrets. My six-year-old one day was like, mom, when do you have this sticker on your back? Like, I don't like it. Take it off. He told me, he was like, please take it off. I was like, babe, I would if I could, trust me. <laughs> I have to thank you so much for putting those fun facts on your website in the first place because that is, uh, yeah, I, I usually don't dive into that specifically, but holy cow. It's and, the first uh, time I've I'm, shared I'm this story. It's the first time I've ever shared this story. So I will be absolutely like telling people, you have to go listen to this podcast just to hear the stories never shared anywhere else for sure. I, I appreciate it. And you literally, you went to through the trouble of uh, getting tanning marks, the shape of Texas, and then the actual tattoo, the shape of Texas, uh, just so you could talk about it on podcast one day. So, so many that regrets. I mean, that's foresight if I've ever heard of. <laughs> regrets doing it, not regrets talking about it here today, to be clear. <laughs> Perfect. Well, speaking of, um, I guess, the opposite of regret, hopefully, having children. Uh, <laughs> that was a terrible segue. <laughs> but uh, you, you uh, before you kind of, have skyrocketed your career into the content creation and podcasting and beyond space. Uh, you spent 
a decent amount of years as stay at home mom and kind of full time focus there. What did you learn from from that time period that one you're thankful for, and then the other part of that would say inspired you to figure out something else to do? Yeah, this is this is a really great question, and this is typically where you know I go to other podcasts and people will say, "What's your story? Like, tell us about your background." And I'm always like. Well, where should I start? Because it's usually kind of iffy on whether I should say, oh, I was a stay at home mom for multiple years, because a lot of people are very hard, like hustle. You don't take breaks. You don't take time off. Why would you ever take time for yourself or for your family? God forbid that happens. And so thank you for asking this question, because I'm sure there's stay at home parents that are listening to this dreaming about their wild business growth and the amazing things that they can do. Oh, my God. You, know. that, you, you are too kind. And, and then what, here, let me stop record it. That's, that was, that's good for the day. That's it. That's, that's the snippet that you got to take out and share on social. But you know, I was, uh, I left the corporate world and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to stay at home for a little bit and figure things out. I really thought I was going to absolutely love being at home and having so much time to focus on my family, focus on my kids. But what it ended up being was a lot of alone time for me and my own thoughts. And sometimes that was scary. Sometimes it was a good thing because, you know, I needed a break. But other times it was like, what am I doing with my life? Because I'm a very ambitious, motivated person. And then all of a sudden I was just ambitious and motivated to clean the house and to cook meals and to do things. And I was like, this, I, I'm not loving this. <laughs> I, I, it shocked me. I thought I was going to love every single second of being a stay at home mom. And it was so much harder than I thought it was going to be. So during that time, to answer your question, I was grateful for that exploration period that I think people that go to school, go to college, go straight into work, and they're set on the career path, they don't get a lot of time that we recently got, unfortunately, in lockdown. And you know, with COVID the last few years, we had some time to pause and reflect and look at things. That was my time back then to ask the big questions. What do I want? How, what is my life going to look like? What, what inspires me? And so it was during that time that I learned how to write. I started journaling. I self-published a book in that time. I learned how to start blogging, like just with no financial pressure because it didn't matter at that point. We had learned how to live off one income. So it was totally fine if my blog wasn't getting thousands of viewers or even five viewers or anybody besides my mom just looking at it and it didn't matter because I didn't have that pressure and so I'm so grateful for that period of being able to explore what do I like what do I not like and just lots of learning I was a sponge at that point learning from other bloggers other other online business owners because the world was just it just blew up my world when I realized people could stay at home with their family and make money it was it was life-changing for sure what were you blogging about in those early days of, uh, of coming out of your content shell? Yeah, it was very messy. It was not clear. I was writing about writing, which was not good because I wasn't a good writer at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were writing about not so good writing. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I was writing about parenting. I was writing about weight loss because it was something um i think that is on the minds of a lot of women right after they have a baby because they're like okay i want to be healthy i want to take care of myself i'm i had children young like i had my first son when i was 22 and so i felt like in my body i'm like i should have this you know certain physique because i'm still so young and then i just had a baby so there was like a lot of mental and physical things i was grappling with and i thought well to process these i'm going to write about them i'm going to journal about journal about them and then i was like let me put this up on a blog and see what happens and so that's really where a lot of it started so let's segue perfectly as crystal typically does to uh the three C's, confident content creation. When I first came across this character named Crystal Prophet, uh, I think you were totally podcast focused. And I know podcasting is still a big focus, but I noticed that you've kind of rebranded a bit to to content creation. And so there's, there's more things that go involved in that. So what topics within this world of content creation do you get like super, like the most jazz and excited and like, hey, I'm ready to get like a, a tattoo of New Mexico about? <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's 
hands down repurposing content. And the reason why repurposing content just makes me so fired up is because it makes my life easier. So I am, you know, like we talked about, I have three boys now that are 13, 10 and six. And we just, we have a very busy family life between my husband working, I'm working, we're doing all these things. So our kids are in athletics, they're in sports, they're doing a lot of things. And whatever I can do to save time, to save money and to save my sanity is what I'm gonna do. And I feel like I kind of apply that same model to content creation because I will often see creators making their lives so much harder than it needs to be. So, so much harder. And people come to me and they say, well, I have a podcast, but I also want to have a YouTube channel and I want to have an email list and I want to have social media and I want to have a website and I want to put blog stuff, but I don't know where to start. And so they just shut down. It's like this wall goes up and they're like, I want to, they have these huge big dreams and they get so like sparkly eyed when they talk about it. But then when they actually look at the work that has to go into that, they shut down and they say, one day, one day that will happen. And I'm here to tell anybody that's listening that repurposing content is the way to go to make your life easier and to make creating content fun because I mean, at the end of the day, what just breaks my heart is hearing someone say, I quit my podcast because it was too hard. I stopped creating YouTube videos because I didn't have the time. It was too stressful. I know that we all need breaks from time to time, but I hate it when someone just walks away forever because they're burned out. I've seen it so many times. I've almost experienced it so many times. And I think that whatever we can do to make it easier on ourselves is the best approach. You read my mind because that whole thing of you know putting up roadblocks for yourself and overwhelm and tackling that like it's i think anybody can relate to that and and then until you get started and uh i mean we're two examples of people that just a few years ago were in that place and now we're like we've i think combined published like over two thousand podcast episodes like it's it's kind of crazy to to look back on it but i was wondering what's what's your answer for getting over that what's what's how do you advise people and Far and away, repurposing content is like your number one jam. So let's get into repurposing a little bit. Uh, and, and we're going to pull out audiograms and uh, blog posts and, and all sorts of stuff from this just to be as meta as possible. But uh, in, in the world of content repurposing, why? first of all, why does repurposing lighten the load so much for any content creator out there? First, I'm going to give you my philosophy on repurposing because then it will make so much more sense on why I think it's so easy. Because I already know there's somebody listening to this that's a content creator. They're rolling their eyes and they're like, Crystal, it's not that easy. I'm trying to do it right now. It sucks. I'm struggling. It's not fun. Yeah, come on, Moose. <laughs> yeah, like bring, bring us the good stuff. The first thing that we have to do is reframe what repurposing content means. And what that means for me and the other people that I teach this to is you have to flip the model of content creation and repurposing on its head. So instead of Max saying, okay, I'm going to record this interview. And then once it's finished, it's recorded, it's edited. I'm going to ask the question, now what? Now, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to create sound bites? Am I supposed to put this in my email? Am I supposed to put it on social do I post the interview on youtube what should i do with it there's a lot more questions that you can ask that don't have a direct answer if you look at repurposing that way so when you flip the model on its head and you think about repurposing at the beginning when you're planning your content when you're saying okay i know that crystal and i have a very aligned audience what could we talk about that we've never talked about on the podcast? Because if we talk about it on the podcast, then I could use that for YouTube content in the future because I know that that'll be SEO searchable and friendly and I could cut it into five or six short videos and talk about very specific things. Okay, I'm gonna plan my interview that way. And then I know that I really wanted to create this blog article or I wanted to create a LinkedIn article that was going to be for people in this specific subset. So I'm, I'm writing all this down. I haven't recorded anything, I haven't done anything. I'm writing all this down in a project management tool 
cool. Like I love Asana. I always talk about Asana. It's my favorite. You could be do this in a notebook. You could do this in a Google Doc. You could do it in a spreadsheet. I don't care where you do this, but you have to think about all the different platforms where you want to post content because then when you're creating all this content, you remember, just like Max remembered so beautifully before we started recording, he was like, hey, we're gonna take a quick uh, selfie real fast. Like we're gonna take a picture together because I'm sure there's 17 ways that he could potentially use that picture now that he has it. He thought about it beforehand. And this is what is so, so important. <laughs> yeah, apologies in advance. Well, well, you're listening to this real time, so apologies right now. But the, I do not think it was the best picture of all time, but we're gonna roll with it. <laughs> you look great. I. Uh, look like upside down somehow no <laughs> but it's those little things like it's the little subtle pieces that you can ask the questions where all do i want to repurpose content up front that way you know oh crap i wanted to use this on youtube but i also wanted to create an instagram reel for it so in my in my editing software i need to make sure that i resize everything in the editing room instead of trying to do it later because then it's going to look all wonky and funky and it's going to take me forever i'm gonna have to hire an editor or whatever the extra added steps this is where the overwhelm comes in you see how quickly that it can creep in once you're thinking about repurposing on the back end so i encourage everyone to think about it up front where do you want to put your content what kind of message is it the same message because for me my message is look different on the different platforms because I create specific content for YouTube, for my email list, for my podcast, for social, for the show notes, but it's all stemming from the same place. And it all comes from planning all of this one time. Maybe it means I have to sit down and plan for an hour instead of 30 minutes, but I got all this content done in one sitting instead of coming back to it over and over and over again. This is starting to creep me out because I literally wrote down uh, that the the next question I was going to ask you is how how much time should you span span see uh, your Texas accent's rubbing uh, yeah, off on me. Out. How it's much time should you span <laughs> uh, prepping for for this and planning this out? So, uh, is an hour is that is that reasonable? Let's say you're going to record a podcast interview. How long should you should you think through these all these different touch points and sharing out awkward photos? Yeah, so I think it just depends. I think it just depends on how many platforms you wanna be present on and what type of repurposing you're going to use. So let me back up for a second and tell you a little bit more about my content strategy because it, it makes a difference here. I don't typically just record a, like I don't record myself recording a podcast. When I record a podcast, it is just, me, my computer, my thoughts, and my notes. Like that's that's what it is. If I'm doing an interview, that's a different story. Obviously there's more people involved and you can see the video and that's how that works. But when it's just me, I just wanna record the podcast. And when I do that, I think of that as my dry run if I'm going to record that same content as a YouTube video. And some people will say, well, Crystal, but you're not really repurposing. You're not, like you should record just Y'all, it's hard. It is so dang hard to record a podcast episode as a video, not screw up, look in the camera the whole time, don't look away, like don't look at your notes. Don't, it's too much. I, I personally cannot do it. I'm sure there are some people that are amazing at this. I choose not to do it. It is less stressful for me. But what I will do is I'll record that whole podcast episode and then say, man, that was really good. What could I use as pieces for this YouTube video that I plan to go alongside of it? And then maybe I realized that could actually be two videos instead of just one. And so I'll take my same outline that I just used for a podcast and I'll split it up into videos. But then whenever I'm recording a video, I'm not saying it out loud for the first time and having all these word flubs and screwing up so much that editing takes me hours and hours. It doesn't take me near as long because I've already said the things that I wanted to say. I can say them more concisely and it's just an easier process for me. So I hope that that makes sense. You let me know if you have any other follow up questions with that. But it does. I, I was I was putting on my my makeup and persona for to get ready for a video after this. But <laughs> I'm with you. It's hard. Like, yeah. Like if you, if you've ever recorded a video or, or been in a video interview, the second that you start thinking about appearance and like eye contact and all of that stuff, 
is the second that you you lose your next thought. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm, sure. I'm totally with you there. So speaking of next thought, uh, this one this is a huge curveball. So get ready for this. But besides repurposing content, what allows you, or, or how do you advise your clients or students to become you know as confident as possible and just all star content creators? It's messy. Let's go back to regrets and all the other things that we talked about earlier. It's you have to make Wait, some all of, mistakes. We don't need to do all of them. We've put you through enough <laughs> Not already. All the regrets, but let's go back to the early days of blogging. About I didn't know what I was doing. I had just no clue. I was just I just got started, and I mean. Max, I don't know if you've listened to my podcast, you've watched any of my YouTube videos, but you'll hear me say... Well, multiple, multiple yeah. pod, yeah. Which, over and over. I, I admire it, by the way, that, yeah, the Profit Podcast, Potty Report, we can get into the name of that later. Yeah, it, Crystal is an absolute just machine with content creation. But it, it, at the end of all of these, I always say the same thing. It's keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. And I... Tr- truly believe that because when people come to me and they're like, I tried recording a podcast one time, it's not for me. But yeah, I sounded like an idiot when I, re- I wish I had, I, th- I deleted it. I deleted it. I have no idea where my first file is I, because that's what I told myself. I was like, I just need to record and delete, record and delete, record and delete until I finally don't sound like an idiot. Well, by the time I did that, probably five or six times, I was like, this is a waste of time. I still sound like an idiot, but I'm just going to record it and it has to be good enough. So (laughs) that's how you get to confidence. Like you just do it. And I know some people say, well, you make it like, it's, it's not that easy. It, It can't be that easy. It really is. And I can tell you right now, I still have days. I still have videos and podcast episodes that I cringe at because I just think it's awful. It's really not that good. So the self-doubt doesn't ever fully go away, but my confidence of worrying about other people, it's, it's not, I don't care. Like I'm not holding my content up to anybody else's but my own. And I can tell you I've gotten better from my if you don't believe me, go back. I'd never deleted my old pot. You can hear every single one of my podcast episodes. <laughs> go back. To, I cringe when I say that because I really don't want you to go back to the beginning, but I also want to show you. Go back. You have to start somewhere. Just get started. <laughs> I totally know what you mean. Like people say they hate the sound of their own voice. And I think once you do enough podcast episodes, and especially once you edit enough episodes, that doesn't bother you anymore. Unfortunately, uh, for people who listen, like, uh, my fiance still cringes with every single episode, mostly about like the jokes and stupid stuff I say. But you, you brought up a really interesting point about just doing it, like record it, even if you just delete it right away, just record and, and, and start taking action and, and doing it that way. I found it both ways. I think no matter what, it helps just to hit record and get in like almost the mindset of recording. Just say something, you know, maybe try to do your intro outro like right away. And I've found that sometimes that in- initial recording is it's awful, and then you just delete it right away. But like that almost breaks you out of your shell to the point that the next you know you record right after that a few seconds later, and you're pretty good. You're good to go. You just needed that little like you know taking the first pitch or if baseball. Some people you know, live by that um, in order to to wake you up. And then other times, I found that first time recording is like the most natural. And sometimes that first take actually works. So any way you slice, it just helps just to do that. But I'm curious, like for you these days, uh, how often do you think your, your first take is good versus you're still kind of, you know what, let's, let's just do one that's awful and then trash it. And then, all right, it's game time. Yeah. I mean, I think that it really just depends on how much, how much of a personality you are throwing behind your podcast voice. And I see so many people doing this. I see the big players, like I've listened to so many, I'm a huge armchair expert fanatic. Like I love their podcast. And I recently went back and listened to some of their very first episodes. So it's Dax Shepard, Monica Padman, and Dax was talking about, like I could hear he was so much more of a character, like, cause he's already a pretty animated person, but he was just, he was, it was overkill. It was too much going back and listening to those. I was like, oh, that's what he did. And he actually said it in a recent episode where he said, I was just playing a part cause he's an actor, he's a trained actor. And he was putting on this persona and not really letting himself just be himself. 
And so this happens to a lot of people. This happened to me. If you go back, I'm a lot more structured. You can probably tell I'm reading a lot. I am scripted. And if that's how you have to start, that's how you have to, lots of my students, several people in my community are like, I had to read all of my notes or I still read all of my notes because I get scared. I'm going to go off topic and go down this rabbit hole. I'm not going to be able to pull myself back in, especially if they're doing a solo episode or it's going to take them forever to edit it because they went off, you know, talking about something they weren't supposed to talk about or whatever. And I just think it's so important that whoever's listening to this, you do what works best for you. If you speak on stages and you feel confident already, podcasting may come pretty naturally to you. If you send voice memos to your best friend all the time, podcasting may come a lot easier to you than someone who is a trained writer and they've just done blog posts and they're an academic who sits in, you know, a classroom and doesn't talk to a ton of people all the time. Like it's just going to be a different experience for everybody. But at the end of the day, you just have to do what works best for you. I mean, I'm a fan still to this day. I would recommend for someone just getting started, pull out the voice memo app on your phone, hit record and just start talking. You don't even have to be talking about what you would podcast about. Just start talking. Say, hey, it's kind of like Elf. I always think of the Elf scenario when he's sitting there he's like <laughs> i'm in a store and i'm singing i'm in yep. a store i won't do it because i can't sing but you know what no, i'm you, talking you, about you started to right there that was perfect <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awful but it's just that idea just start talking just start talking it's gonna get better the more that you do it i'm totally with you i advise people the same thing like when you're the very early stages of a podcast it doesn't start to feel real until you buy your microphone and start recording like that just doing it doing test episodes like i remember uh, with my family business, like when launching the Wild Business Growth Podcast, there were like three or four times, like a few weeks in a row in the summer of 2018. So actually, like same time that you got into podcasting, which is really cool, that I would record uh, just like me testing out the mic. And I was so excited to like share it with the family and like be like, oh, this is like what's to come. And, and now if you go back and listen to these snippets, I'll have to dig them up. I mean, they were terrible. And, and even <laughs> you struck a chord. My early episodes too, it's like, my voice was so like try hard over the top. It was so like, God. welcome to the wild business growth yes. podcast. Yeah, like <laughs> not quite that level, but basically. Um, so that's, that's a treat as well. But yeah, you're there's some, just the repetition of doing something so often. And um, especially with other people is you get so much more comfortable on the mic and so much more com comfortable creating content. And on the solo podcasting note, cause that, that's something I have, as far as releasing episodes that are just me, I've never done that. But I've done, you know, for every episode, I record like intro, outro, ad read. Uh, and then for like episode 200, 100 special, there's lots of solo recording to kind of move it along. But you know solo recording super duper well, uh, in addition to guest interviewing. I just, I find solo so much more difficult when it's like literally just you and your laptop and your mic. Like, how do you get yourself to be confident in it to come out good and, and most importantly natural when you are recording solo podcasting? Oh, it's such a good question. It's one that I haven't really thought about, but now that I'm thinking about the origins, because I have recorded. So if we go back to my original podcast episode, I recorded about 40 six episodes, I believe, before I rebranded. So the Profit Podcast is a rebrand of my original show. But of those 46 episodes- That was episodes, the, the rookie something. The, the rookie life. The, yeah. The rookie life. The Perfect. Rookie I'm, life. I'm such yeah. a rookie, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but in those 46 episodes, there might have only been a handful of solos. I was like, these are the scariest things. Like, what am I even doing? This is, this is really hard. And those are the ones that you can tell I'm a lot more scripted because it's not a dialogue back and forth. It's a monologue and I'm just talking and it's, it's awkward. So if you're thinking about doing a solo, just, just know, rip off the bandaid. It's going to be awkward. Put it on there. I tell everybody it's so weird being in a room by yourself with a microphone and you're again, I'm in a store and I'm singing. You, yeah, it's weird. Perfect. That, but, that was even better. See, <laughs> second time. I'm getting my pitch, <laughs> getting the pitch right. But to go back to your, your question, I think back, I started my second podcast, which we can talk about the potty report and the naming of it here in a second. But I started that in March, 2020. 
what else is going on March 2020? Chaos uh, all over My the birthday. world. My birthday. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Positive spin. We'll put it on that. <laughs> but since then, it's been over two years that I committed to recording a podcast and having one publish Monday through Friday, five minutes or less on that podcast. And what it was, it, it fulfilled a few things for me. One, I didn't know what to do with my time. It was it was a, a coping mechanism for what was going on in the world. I'll admit that freely. But it was also something that I wanted to do just as an experiment. It's kind of like, I call it my creative sandbox. I was like, well, if this one doesn't work, it's okay because it's, you know, it's not my big show. It's not my main show. It's kind of like my side my side hustle that I have on top of my other podcast. And in doing that, I have gotten closer. I'm almost at, and this is crazy. I'm almost at a thousand episodes that I've created since 2018. I think I'm at 985 as of this week, as wow. of this recording. I, I bet as you're listening to this, Crystal's <laughs> probably just hit the 1000 milestone. So congrats probably. for that. Yeah. The, Holy, that's a lot of potty. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like, it's because in doing this and recording by myself, I was forced into this creative constraint that has helped me beyond my wildest dreams because forcing myself to this time limit of five minutes took the pressure off because I was like, well, if I screw up, I don't even have to edit. I don't edit that show whatsoever, by the way. I record boom, it gets uploaded. I, there's no editing at all. And if I mess up, I just hit stop and I trash it and I start over because it's five minutes. Like it's, oh that's my, fine. That, yeah, it sounds fine in theory, but that also like scared me to the core of uh, like, how often do you get to four minutes and 59 seconds and then all the time <laughs> and, then, and then cough and sneeze for five <laughs> seconds straight and then start over <laughs> Yeah, all the time, all the time. No, it's cr like You should see how much I've trimmed. All, I mean, it's milli milliseconds to get under that five minute mark. It's yeah. I'm sweating in the editing room sometimes. But in doing that, I have just gotten so much more confident in speaking in a more concise way. So th I feel like those solo episodes have trained me to be a better communicator all around, not just in podcasting, not just, you know, on this show or that show or in my content, but I can get to the point so much faster than I used to be able to. I could really structure sentences and stories in a way that they will flow better for the listener because I've done this training. So again, going back to your original question about solo creation, you just have to get comfortable talking to yourself. I know that sounds really strange. It sounds like such a weird concept, but I have a friend who's a speaking coach and she's like, yeah, you got to talk to yourself in the shower, in the closet, while you're getting ready, while you're in the car by yourself, because it's the thing, like sometimes we're just most uncomfortable with ourselves. Everybody feels this way. It's everybody. It's not just me. It's not just Max. It's not just anybody who's thinking about podcasting. It's all of us. We just have to get over that first obstacle of feeling comfortable with ourselves and validating that what you have to say is relevant for somebody else to hear and somebody else needs to hear your message <laughs> that is incredible advice talk to yourself more do it uh in the streets from the rooftop no, yes. no that's that's fantastic <laughs> you, so many people sing in the shower you can talk in the shower too yes yes if you can talk to yourself you can podcast and if you can podcast or have any aspirations for podcasting slash talking to yourself, uh, you'll probably be a huge fan of my new Podcasting to the Max newsletter. Uh, and, and if you're crazy enough for, for more Max, that's that's where you can find it. Go to maxpodcasting.com, scroll down on that homepage, and sign up for the newsletter there. All you got to do is put in your email, and you are all set for Podcasting to the Max. Now, let's stop talking about yourself, Max, so we can put in a good segue here that, that deals with self. Speaking of yourself, let's switch gears a little bit, get to a segment on inspiration and creativity. So this is more you on the personal side, not that we haven't <laughs> revealed too many personal <laughs> details about yourself or background already, but uh, people, hobbies, resources, what do you do in your free time when you can squeeze them out to stay creative? 
I love stand up comedy. I love it. It's my husband and I, like, we will watch all the latest Netflix specials and crack. Like, we saw Jim Gaffigan last year in Houston. And it's like, it's the thing that makes me most happiest when I'm alone or with them, when I'm with someone. Like, I will rewatch comedy movies that I've seen a thousand times. Like, I'm a huge Adam Sandler fan. Like, I love Adam Sandler so, so much. I can't believe you like Adam Sandler. How dare you? <laughs> I love him so, so much. And I just look at all of these different people that are creative and they're hilarious. And I think partly because I'm like, that's what I want to be. I want to be funny. I want to feel relatable. I want people to really identify myself, my persona, if you will, that's put out into the ethos that is the online marketing space. I want them to look at my content and say, you know what, I can learn from her. Also, she's pretty grounded and she's kind of crazy and silly. And it kind of takes that like strict teacher or someone that's educating you holier than thou, like me personally, I shut that person off. And so I like to surround myself with comedy is is that a good answer is that the right answer i don't know well, but <laughs> it's a bit comical yeah but... your puns are on point today like it's thank it's you really good. they're on punt it's good yes but <laughs> have you watched the marvelous mrs mazel i haven't oh okay because that i think you'd enjoy it because i okay i'm the same way i love i love comedy but i i hadn't watched it like stand-up specials or anything like that or, or been to a show in a while but always enjoy it. Like Dane and I like love, love tuning in. So many shows we watch are comedy as well. And then we were re recommended Mrs. Maisel and it's such an awesome show. Like we're loving it. We're binging it at the time of this recording because it covers Midge, Mrs. Maisel. It, it covers like her journey of, you know, rising in the ranks of uh, stand up comedy and like even getting into it in the first place. So I think it's somebody who's interested in comedy. Like that's really inspiring and just fun to watch in general and then they throw like the whole like everything that happens outside of comedy in her life on top of it and it's just a crazy like amount of things to juggle but needless to say there's lots of stand-up sets in it so i i, okay. I would bet you'd I'll enjoy it, it. it's pretty cool i've heard great things about it i know it's won tons of awards like over yeah. and over again so i'm gonna have to check it out and then how about on the people side so you're super connected in the industry and like anybody i know in the podcasting world i feel like they know you as well who's maybe a couple names that have been instrument inst the, that have stumbled over your words that have been instrumental to you stepping out of your comfort zone and becoming the thought leader that you've become in this industry. I have to say it's my mentor and her name is Amy Porterfield. If anybody okay. knows no, that No, it doesn't name. really sound, doesn't really ring a bell. I mean, come <laughs> put, on. Put, put in a, uh, while this is, <laughs> on the spot, putting, putting a good word for her on the Wild Business Growth Podcast. I've been working for yes. quite a few, a long time on that. <laughs> Any, anyway, sure. no, a Amy's fantastic. Yeah. And the reason why is because she's the one, like, she personally charged me with being someone in the industry because she was the pivotal catalyst that had me rebrand and go all in because whenever I first came into her world or she first came into mine as a mentor, I was in that rough patch of, I had a podcast, what am I doing? I don't really know, but I kind of like teaching people about this, but that's not really what I talk about, but maybe I could try. And she just kind of pushed me off the cliff and pulled the rip cord for me <laughs> and said, you're fine. Like, this is, this is great. Just go for it. And I haven't looked back since, and it's been an amazing ride, and I'm very, very grateful. So if anybody's listening, you haven't heard of Amy Porterfield, Online Marketing Made Easy podcast, go check it out. It's such great content. It is, and that's so cool. Like, looking back at your career now, like, she did to you, like, what you do to your students and clients. Um, so that's that's flown through. So that's amazing. Yeah, Amy Amy is awesome, legend in the space and beyond. And then how about resources or like ways you stay inspired? Like what what are some names or outlets or publishers or I mean it could be people again, obviously Amy's part of this, but um that have been influential in you becoming an expert in like the podcasting and content creation space in the first place. 
I have to give a shout out to my friends at Buzzsprout because they are in Squadcast because, I mean, this is where we're recording this interview right now, but... Oh, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah, it's here. (laughs) It's here. Just letting everybody know. But I got connected with these companies whenever they were first really emerging and like the spotlight was just kind of, you know, how you like imagine someone like in a theater, like twisting the spotlight light to like go full on on somebody. I was kind of there when they were in motion and it wasn't like, boom, podcast exploded. And it was so vital for me to be a part of their communities and understand what they were trying to do as businesses, because now that so many people are in the market, you know, there's industry experts, industry leaders, it's kind of hard to see who is the standout company to really go with, who do you trust, who's, you know, in it for helping you as a creator and who just is, I'm not going to name names, who is just trying to take your money and get all your, like, get all your information and all those things. Yeah. Max Brandstead or Max Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's just one of those things that I lean heavily on these resources because they are experts. And I will be very honest with you. I'm a podcaster. I'm a content creator. Y'all, I don't know all the fancy technical things that they talk about. Like they're talking about super, I don't talk about compression, equalizations, levels. Like I I don't do any of that. I don't do it. I hire, I hire these companies that do that. And and that's something that's kind of like a pet peeve of mine as well. Like they, like I still edit in audacity. Like you, like they're all this EQ compression, all like, the technical side can get so advanced on editing and post-production, even using the word post-production. I can't believe I just did that. But like, you don't need to go crazy in order for a podcast to sound good. Like there's a few simple things with setup and like mic placement and equipment. And then, you know, obviously there's an art to editing, but you don't need to like watch like a 17 hour tutorial in order to make stuff sound good after the fact. Yep, I have free videos on YouTube. You can go check out. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Go go watch those. They are because this is the reason why I got so fired up. Like going back to your question about helping people create content with confidence. If you tell yourself, I'm not smart enough to do this, I'm not technical enough to do this, that will be a roadblock that hinders you from ever even getting started. And that was one of the reasons why I like was drawn to these companies like a moth to a flame because I'm like, they make it look so easy. It looks, it doesn't look complicated. It doesn't look scary. It looks so simple. And that's just what I'm drawn to. Like, I just, I like easy. I like clean. I like simple and just do yourself a favor and try to find companies, platforms, mentors that don't make it so complicated. They give you a clear direction of what you need to do to succeed and they encourage you to do it. They push you off the cliff. They (laughs) go on, fly. (laughs) (laughs) There's a lot of cliff pushing going on. Yes. As far as being clear for what to do next, let's get to a fan favorite segment called the Wild Business Shoutout of the Week. The Wild Business Shoutout of the Week. You do elf singing, I do harmonica. (laughs) Wild business shout out of the week. This is where we talk about it. A wild and crazy and creative marketing campaign or or buzz marketing approach that really, really is outside the box because a lot of marketing can get so plain and all the same. We've already alluded to the entertainment industry, but there's something in the world of movies that really, really caught your attention. Do you mind taking the mic and sharing what that is? Yes, yes. So I, I love that you do this. I think it's so fun because... I think that when we are so caught up in our own worlds and our own industries that we don't even see a great idea when it comes along because it's just more white noise in the background. But recently I am so excited because when we're recording this, I'm told my husband, he has to go take me to, we're having a date night. I'm like, you have to go take me to see this movie. But where the crawdads sing is a book that became a movie and it's out as of us recording this. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. I want to go see this. I read the book. I am a huge fan of the author of this book. I follow her on Instagram, but this is the marketing strategy that I love. 
because Reese Witherspoon, y'all may or may not know who that is, but you know, yeah. maybe. <laughs> She's done okay. Just a little, little no name, <laughs> no name from Nashville. But she has been a pioneer of this book from its release date. It was part of Reese's Book Club. It was part of Hello Sunshine production. Like she has had her hands in this entire process. And now as the book is launching, or sorry, as the movie is launching, there are so many things that are happening that are behind the scenes related. They are sharing stories about why the people that are in this movie were cast. They're sharing stories of why it was filmed, where it was filmed. They're sharing stories that as a fan, I'm a fan of the book. I cannot wait to see this movie. I'm so excited and hungry for these behind the scenes details because it paints more of a picture of what I'm going to experience just being part of this show, like watching it and understanding all the stories behind it. And maybe it's just because I'm a stories like romantic. I love the behind the scenes of how things are made and understanding the mechanics behind it all. But for anyone to take from this for your business or your business idea, it's share those behind the scenes for your customers, for the people in your audience that could be your potential customers, for your previous customers that you're like, I want them to come back and be a repeat customer. Share those behind the scenes. I know you're probably like, well, that's dumb. No one wants to see me in my office, take a picture of I'm recording a podcast or, you know, I'm standing at the school bus stop and I'm jotting down a sauna notes for the next thing I'm going to record. Like no one wants to see that, but we do. We really do. Behind the scenes are everything, especially whenever you're a fan of a movie, of a show, of content, whatever the case is. So I hope that that was helpful. Yeah, and I'm, I have to cut you off because I think if you spoke for one more sentence, you would bring up Office Ladies, which I'm about to ask you about <laughs> next. So Yes. So let's wrap up with some rapid fire Q&A. You ready for it? Go. Go for it. All right. Let's get wild. Office Ladies. So I know you're a huge fan of Office Ladies, which Dana and I are as well. Uh, we still kind of miss the old days of The Office on Netflix. I think we'd listen more regularly if it was. But still, regardless, amazing show. Jenna and Angela are incredible. That I, I forgot the question because I'm just praising them, the show so much. But <laughs> anyway, there's, there's a lot of behind the scenes in Office Ladies. What's the fun fact that most stands out in your mind that they've revealed in the show about like office behind the scenes that you're still like, whoa, like no way. Can I share with you something? Can I share with you my own fun fact about the office ladies that, podcast? That works. I actually was going to ask you that next. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. No, I was going to say, cause then I'll, I'll share both. Well, they featured a question that I submitted and I oh, no way. died. Oh my gosh. I almost <laughs> died. I was running. It was my five o'clock because it when they come out on a Wednesday morning, I'm running at 5 a.m. I was running and I was like, oh yeah, I think I submitted a question on their website for this. And then they were like, and Crystal from Houston, Texas asked. And I was like, oh. <gasps> they are about to read my question and I <laughs> lost it. Oh my gosh. I squealed like a little girl and I was like, oh my gosh, people are going to think a woman is getting attacked outside of their house. It's 5 a.m. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it just office thing. ladies. <laughs> it was just an office ladies thing. So that's my fun fact is they feature one of my questions and I just, I'm a fangirl. I mean, right now I'm so red. I'm so excited about this. Because <laughs> Wait, but what's uh, so, great. so inner, uh, what's the word? interstitial question intermittent question yes what was your question you don't want to know you have to go listen to it because it's about it's about when do you remember Pam... what episode it was yes <laughs> that's i don't want to say it on here because it's like i've already revealed too much about me but okay it's about pam <laughs> it's about pam giving birth and that's what i'll leave it at that i'll leave it at that okay one. Yeah. Well, that's every episode. No, I'm just they're kidding. in the hospital. They're in the hospital. It's yeah. It's a question about that <laughs> particular scene. M Michael walks in, sees Pam in the stirrups. What actually happened? Go go listen to it. It's it was a good question. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, they are incredibly good on that show. Like that's a good kind of lesson to live by as a as a podcast. If you are taking listener submitted questions like that, like they are the best I've ever heard at like naming yes. who submitted it. Like giving you know giving the, the questioner credit so that's yes. really cool but but anyway what else, what other besides the uh <laughs> obgyn what what other yes. question what, what other fun fact from behind the scenes made you go wow i 
am just fascinated every time they start talking, but I think that the props manager, like understanding what the different people on set do, I love that they give kudos to all of these people that probably fly under the radar for most TV and film production. And they just praise them and tell them like, just guys, they are amazing. They, we could not have this successful show without them. So I love that. But the props manager specifically that he presents things on a silver tray every time he asks the director, do you want this one or you want that one? So it could be like a dead bird, like what's supposed to be a dead bird. It's like, well, do you want this dead bird or this one? And it's all on a silver <laughs> tray. And I just imagine this happening and it makes me die laughing. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's th that's the coolest part when it's like, like it's, uh, it's obviously awesome when they have, you know, members of the cast on and like these, you know, now like famous actors and actresses on. But uh, when they have people that like the kind of the roles behind the scenes that you don't really think about, that's where like some of the coolest stuff stands out. And you reminded me of, uh, I remember one of the episodes they said that, you know, when the infamous uh, Kevin spilling the giant boiling pot of chili. Yes. When they did that, they had like little patch. They had like three different patches of carpet that they yes. could use for that. And it was, uh, so they had three takes at it and that had to be extremely stressful, but obviously they got it. Yes. Oh, and that's one of my favorite episodes ever. Like in that opening is so, so good. Yes. And it's become one of the favorite gifts in, in all of the internet world. Yes. Uh, all right. So we, um, I mean, we could talk about that all day, but uh, we'll do something completely different. Uh, there's a show called The Office. So what is your favorite Office episode of all time? Casino Night. Ooh. Great. Yeah. The end. It's chock full of just everything. And if you watch The Office, like just go. It's that that's the hands down best episode. <laughs> what is the surprise guest on Smartless, another show that we're mutually fans of, um, who has been your favorite or most entertaining so far? I think that I really love the Bradley Cooper one just because I, I'm a big fan of him of like acting and like all the things that he does anyway but i feel like it was just such a real like it was a real conversation and not just jokes 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 just being funny even though i love how that's how most of their episodes are but that one was just it was really real and i i liked it i thought it was great it's a shame he's not more good looking i mean it's, it's he's really <laughs> struggles in that department yeah he should just go live under a rock somewhere that way <laughs> he yeah. really should bradley cooper <laughs> should live under a rock what is a, a weird talent or party trick you have that doesn't impact your business, but you're just really good at? Oh, I can talk with my mouth closed. I sa I can say, <laughs> and it's really creepy, and my husband's like, please don't do that. <laughs> but if I will scream, help me, get me out of here, get me out of here, because it sounds like I swallowed a little girl and she's screaming. And it makes me think of like poltergeist back in the day, like Carol Ann would scream out of the TV. We're getting really dark. This took a turn, Max. I wasn't prepared for this today. Yeah, yeah. It typically does with rapid fire. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I could do it without laughing. Okay. <sighs> okay. Hey, let me out, let me out of here. <laughs> oh my God. That's insane. Wow. That I'm glad I asked. It's, oh my gosh! You can say no, but please let me keep that in for for yeah, multiple episodes. That's totally <laughs> fine. No one saw it. I, I covered my face. I hope that's your new sting that you use on all your episodes. It's a new awesome, segment. cool. All right, and then last one. I don't know how we're going to top that, but last one. Um, so one of your podcasts, but the the daily one you mentioned is the Potty Report. P O D D Y. I uh, you alluded to the name earlier. Uh, awesome name, kind of a pun there, because you can listen on the toilet, as I know you've said. But how often do you get like accused of uh, having a toilet podcast focused on toilets and the history of toilets and everything in that world? <laughs> okay, so that's never happened. But I will let everybody know, if you want to go check out the Potty Report, if you look at the logo, there is a woman sitting on the toilet that I had, and she's looking at her phone, if you've never noticed that before. Oh my God. I, <laughs> I had my graphic designer. I've listened, but I don't think I, I, I don't think I ever paid Go enough back. attention to the vision. Wow, Go check out. Is... Go check out the logo. She's wow. sitting on the toilet looking at her phone. So 
and, and there's a little girl trapped inside of her as well. That's her. <laughs> Maybe she's trapped inside the toilet, like in the toilet bowl. I don't, this, yeah. <laughs> but I do want to clarify real fast because people are like, oh, that's weird. What? So my dad's a plumber. My dad's always been a plumber, like for years and years, like this has been his profession. We have a lot of sick humor when it comes to potty stuff. I will I will talk about it with Max whenever we're done here because it's not it's it's rated R stuff. It's not for the children. And we so, are rated explicit, by the way. But yeah. go on. And so that's where and it's a pun on the word podcast potty. You could listen to it in the bathroom. It's all the things. So yes, go check it out. It's it's good and it's five minutes or less. So it's not that much. <laughs> As you're explaining that, I went back and looked at the artwork for the potty report. And you really you have it hidden there. That's like a fun Easter egg. Like more people should do that with their artwork. Mm-hmm. That's really that might be even your best fun fact yet somehow. Yes. So that's I, I, <laughs> I appreciate the the humor and, and history of plumbing. So that's great. Crystal, this has been incredible and uh really, really appreciate. Glad we finally connected and uh really, really appreciate all your stories and advice and everything from I'll just call you a moose to um, (laughs) (laughs) confident content creation. So this is awesome. Uh, I do want to shout out before we wrap up our mutual friend, Whitney Rosenson, who's got an awesome podcast, Art Dimensions Beyond the Palette. Yay! I just know she can't say enough kind words about you and and she's taking your course and um, and she's she's just an awesome podcaster. So I want to shout her out because I know she's listening. So hi, Whitney. You're awesome. Thank you, Whitney. (laughs) (laughs) Where should people go? Like, where's your favorite place for people to connect with you and, and, and do anything in the world of Crystal Profit? Yeah. Thank you so much for having me to, today, Max. This has just been so much fun as well. Like this has been such a treat, but yeah, you can connect with me at crystalprofit.com. Crystal with the K profit has two F's and two T's and you'll find links to my podcast, my YouTube, social, all the things get on my email list. And that's, that's just the best place to go. And I hope that you take a screenshot wherever you're listening to this and tag me and tag Max on Instagram or your favorite platform and let us know what you let us know which fun facts surprised you the most. Maybe that's the thing that we need to ask people to share. But perfect. Thanks so much. And yeah, I'm excited for all the uh, sharing on MySpace. And then uh, final thoughts, the stage is yours. It could be a quote. It could be uh, another nickname you have. It could be another voice you do. Whatever you want, send us home here. I just want to say to anyone that's thinking about content creation, if you think it's too hard, you think it's too complicated, then you're making it too hard. You're making it too complicated. Make it a little bit easier on yourself and keep it up because we all have to start somewhere. Crystal, thank you so much. It never gets old. Thank you so much, Crystal, for coming on the podcast, sharing your tips, your stories, uh, lessons, voices with closed mouths. And thank you, Wild Listeners, for tuning in to another episode. If you want to hear more wild stories like this one, make sure to follow the Wild Business Growth Podcast on your favorite app and tell a friend about the podcast and then see what funny voices you can do because that's, that's how it's always a lot of fun. You can also find us on Good Pods where there are some fantastic podcasts and podcasters and podcast recommendations. By the way, Crystal is an incredible follow on Good Pods and you'll be you'll, you'll check out all of her episodes of Office Ladies and Smartless and wild business growth podcast that she listens to and for any help with podcast production you can learn more at maxpodcasting.com and you can also scroll down on that home page and sign up for the podcasting to the max newsletter until next time let your business run wild bring on the bongos (laughs) 